Hello, I'm ABX Toycat, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be talking about potions in Minecraft. Potions in Minecraft are one of the areas of the game that bring a lot of complexity for some people because although there is just a few basic recipes you have to remember, the truth is there are 70 different potions you can end up with, and yet remembering the recipes of each of these can be kind of complex, especially when you remember that some of these are just the potion of harming, which we drink it and of course it hurts us, or the splash potion of leaping, so you can give your friends a leaping bonus. Some of these you just really don't need to remember, and I figured instead of telling you about those, I tell you about five potions you absolutely need to use in day-to-day -day Minecraft life, and that if you're going to remember any potion combinations, these should be those ones. So hopefully you do all enjoy the video. If you do like it, please do like it and let me know, because it helps out the channel a lot, and lets me do like these five blank you need videos, and want to see more maybe. But yeah, let's get straight into it really, shall we? And let's start with the first one here, which is uh, well, actually the first uh, thing for any of these, because as uh, you might already know, if you know your potions, uh, to actually make pretty much any potion in the game, you need to first take a water bottle and then put some never warts in there. This will give you the awkward potion with no effects on it, and this is what most potions in the game are made from. So you need to get lots of these awkward potions. In this case, I just have this big tower of um, you know uh, brewing stands to give me lots of these. You know, you can make one uh, brewing stand and just keep refreshing it, or you can have like 12 like me, and then you get like 36 uh, of these awkward potions at a time. Good for mass potion production if you're making a lot. Anyway, let's get straight into it for the first one here, which is actually going to be uh, one that involves the uh, magma cream. So um, unfortunately, you will need to go into the nether at least once unprotected, because the uh, the potion you get as a result of this is the fire resistance potion. So why is the fire resistance potion so cool? Why is it a potion you need in Minecraft? So, the truth is, in Minecraft, there are three deaths that will give you, you know, super unavoidable pain, and also, uh, you know, a loss of items. And losing items in Minecraft is so devastating. Like, that that can be a game-ending thing if you just lose your enchanted armor, your enchanted sword. You don't ever do that. So, two of the ways you can die are, like, from a creeper, or, like, multiple creepers, so they blow up your stuff. You could fall off the world. These two things are reasonably easy to avoid. The last one isn't easy to avoid, though, because it involves being knocked into fire. So, the recipe, by the way, is uh, throw it in with um, the uh, magma cream, then throw it with some redstone, then throw some gunpowder. This will give us smash potion of resistance with extra length on them. So why is this going to be so handy? So all you need to do is bear in mind whenever you're going below ground to where there is lava nearby, or whenever you're going to the nether, just put one of these potions nearby. And the reason we turn them into splash potions, which is what gunpowder does by the way, is because once we up them to six or eight minutes, uh, it's, it goes back down to six once you do this. Uh, if we once we up them to eight minutes, then turn them back into splash potions. What we can actually just do is put them in a dispenser and have a simple button near our furnace. So right, it's near our sorry near our nether, and like this we can be like, oh, we're going to the nether. Wait a minute, we have a, uh, a handy little thing right here. Let's uh, just uh, stand here, press the button, boom. Now we have splash uh, resistance uh, off uh, fire resistance for now six minutes, which means when we're in the nether, we're safe. If we get knocked into lava, we just swim through it. And isn't that pretty cool? I think that is too. So uh, yeah, that is uh, my little tip for, uh, you know, basically put a fire resistance stand next to your uh, your nether, put it next to your underground cave. And it means that if you fall in lava, it's just like, haha, a skeleton, think you can kill me. And it just avoids so much unnecessary pain. And I like avoiding unnecessary pain. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think you would like to too. So the fire resistance potion, uh, throw a, uh, you know, put the awkward potion in with a magma cream, follow up with a redstone, follow up with a gunpowder, and you get yourself these six minutes worth of smash resistance, which I think is quite handy. So let's move on to the second one here, which actually involves one of the new fish that came in. So it's the puffer fish. This thing is actually the trickiest part to make of the whole potion because you are going to need to find these and they are a reasonably represent. I think it's like 3% of fishing. So go fishing for a bit, wait till you get a puff fish, and then put three awkward potions in there with it. So we're actually going to have to <laughs> uh, take the puff fish from the stand there. So let's take this and let's put it in there. Because once we do that, it's actually going to turn the awkward potion into a water breathing potion. So the water breathing potion is one, I'll admit, that I actually kind of mocked when it first came out. Like, oh, I can just, you know, use torches. And I'll, you know, I, I still stand by the fact that you don't ever need a water breathing potion just to breathe underwater, which sounds ridiculous. You might be thinking, Toy Cat, what do you need a water breathing potion for if not to breathe underwater? So the thing about uh, underwater, you know, vision that I didn't know is I used to think that night vision gave you entire vision underwater but something I didn't know, one of the secret uses of water beam potions, is if you take it so uh, the recipe by the way, throw in puffish and then just to make it longer, throw a redstone because puffish is super rare so you might as well do that uh, but yeah, I'll just show you for now uh, with our regular uh, water beam potion, it actually allows you to see underwater much better, which seems kind of bizarre, but as you can see, everything's better and it's terrible to see here, but if we go into a you know, let's say a water temple, everything gets better, and it's not just that we can see better the water breathing just helps us uh, breathe better there and basically the two effects synergize really well together. But even if you don't have a um, an ocean monument in your world, so you don't need to go do that, it also is really handy because of situations like, uh, let's say you have an ocean underwater and you want to go search it for, uh, you know, like abandoned mine shafts, uh, you know, stronghold entrances, stuff like that. You can do that quite easily. Just grab yourself a watering potion, go under the water, and then you can do it. Just find just a dandy. And that's why I think the watering potion is one of the five potions you'll need because, you know, going underwater is a really handy way to find that stuff without having to do all the digging. You can find mob spawners under there sometimes and 
Go dig under the sort of surface of the water. At the least, you'll find something like clay. At the best, you might find, you know, an ocean monument that you missed, or even, you know, just something like the abandoned mine shaft, or even a mob spawner. There's a bunch of different possibilities, and I think they're all pretty cool. So, uh, water breathing potion, put yourself a puffish in there, then put yourself some redstone in afterwards. So, next up, we actually have the one that I will always say is perhaps the best potion in the game, and I think, yeah, I'd stand by best potion in the game, because it involves blaze powder. So, if you don't know what this makes, so let's grab some awkward potions from our massive stack here. So, if you don't know what uh, the blaze powder makes, then you're in for a treat, because it actually makes a strength potion, which, by itself, just a regular strength potion, it's strong, but it's not that notably strong. Like, it's, uh, you know, having a strength potion one is nice, I guess, like, uh, you know, it, it, uh, if you, if you want to be a bit stronger, that's nice, 130% damage is cool, but the real cool thing is what happens after we get our, our strength potion, which we'll get in a few seconds, and then you put it in with some glowstone. So, there are three basic effects you can apply to most potions. There is a gunpowder to make it a splash potion, there is, um... There is, of course, uh, you know, there's gunpowder to make it splash potion. There's redstone to make it last longer. And then there's uh, glowstone, in certain cases, to double the effect. So strength goes from strength 1 to strength 2, which takes it from 130% attack damage to 260. And this is just such an insane level. And to show this off to you, I have a sword here and a sharpness 5 sword. So um, one of our zombies has actually despawned here. But um, just to kind of prove this to you, a sharpness 5 sword it will, it will take you two hits to kill a zombie. So if we wanted to kill this zombie right here, we'd have to hit him twice. Uh, but if we actually just take... A a regular sword, uh, which, you know, it is no sharpness whatsoever, and we drink this strength 2 potion that we got from right there, and it gives us 206% attack damage, which means even a regular diamond sword is going to be much stronger than a, a, a sharpness 5 sword, because this is going to overkill damage the uh, zombies. So, yeah, that's kind of insane if you ask me, uh, and bear in mind, this isn't just for killing zombies, because, you know, killing them in less hits is handy. This strength potion is so amazing, because for PvP, you will dominate everyone. This takes your, you know, your damage from diamond sword, up to 3 or 4 hits to kill, up to 1 hit to kill, and you can kill for a decent amount of armor, it, add that with sharpness 5, and you are just unstoppable in PvP. But it's not just great for PvP, I know that's not what everyone does all the time. It's also amazing when it comes to the Ender Dragon, and when it comes to the Wither. I have killed the Wither, I, I think it was like 7 seconds the record I achieved. Uh, by using strength potions plus this sword, plus criticals, you can kill any boss in the game, any mob in the game so fast. The Enderman, you know how long it can take to you know attack if you have a regular sword, he can be killed in one hit. Everything can be killed in so much uh, you know less time if you use uh, the... Uh, you know, use the strength potion too, and that's why I think it's the best potion in the game. It's it's such a simple overlooked one, but it is pretty amazing, and uh, yeah, it's pretty simple to make. Uh, I'd recommend having some redstone if you're going to PvP, but for fighting the end dragon or the wither, you or not the end dragon, but for the wither, you will be done in a minute thirty. So just this regular potion will be just fine there. So let's drink a milk bucket, get rid of all these potion effects, and let's move on to the next one here, which involves the glistening melon. So if you've uh, if you don't know the recipes for um you know actually make, making stuff, the glistening melon is a very confusing one. So actually, let's grab ourselves some uh, more. Uh, these potions. See, the, the tower stand is pretty handy here. So let's throw them in there, and let's show you what it makes, because the glistening melon is made from uh, melons and then a lot of gold nuggets, kind of like the golden cat recipe, but around a melon, and uh, if, you, if you've if you never actually seen this use, you might just think, okay, so it's a nicely decorated melon, that seems like a good use of time, but if what you do is you take it, you put it in there, then you expect, you put it in with some glowstone to make it a, a healing potion too, because you get a health potion from this, and then you add gunpowder to it, so if we take this from here, and then we put it in with the gunpowder, you get something that is really quite remarkable, because every single source of healing in the game requires you to eat in some form. Even the golden apple, which gives you regeneration and gives you uh, the extra hearts, it requires you to eat, oh, oops, uh, it requires you to eat it just like this, and that does take some few seconds. And if you're in a life or death situation, you don't always have a few seconds. So the instant health two potion uh, sp when it's splash is really, really amazing because think about this situation. So let's um, let's simulate some PvP here. So uh, basically, oh, <laughs> put it back in the, in the brewing stand there. So let's uh, take this back. Uh, let's, uh, let's, we're, we're, you know, we're injured, we've just been attacked by someone, which in this case is enderpearls, you're running away from them, you're so sure you're gonna die, you know they have a full, uh, you know, health bar or something close to that, so what you do is you just throw this in front of you, and then like, just like that, instantly it restores your health, because if you're running, you'll run straight into it, and it'll be great. If you don't trust that, then you can throw it at the floor, you won't get the full effect, but still, you can do it that way, and you can guarantee that only you'll be hit by it, the other person won, and that's why the instant health potion 2 is amazing. It can change the tide of any PvP fight, and they're not gonna know it happened, because they might see a splash or hear a splash if they're observant, but it's not like when you do it on the flat uh, on the floor. So if we grab uh, <laughs> if we grab the uh, leaping potion just here, and we throw this on the ground, you can see it's going to make a kind of obvious effect, and they're going to know something's up. But with this, it just hits you straight on. You might see a few particles, but you're going to be covering most of them. And then you turn around, and then you wreck them. They're dead. They had no idea what even happened, and that's why I love about the instant health potion. So it's great for saving yourself in PvP, but even uh, you know for regular survival, you know you 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 see yourself dying, you're in lava, or you're in any situation like that. 
throw me the instant health potion and it can save you. The number of times I've died because I've just been, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, I, I was like on fire or something and I'm slowly dying. I'm like, if I just had a tiny bit more health, then the po- uh, health potions got you covered. And in the same, uh, you know, vein of the, um, you know, the <laughs> the fire resistance thing, you just have a, like an emergency button in your base that's like, okay, when uh, anything bad happens, we just hit the mayday switch and then it gives us one of these. We throw out the ground and then everything's good. So yeah, that is the slash potion of healing. Pretty handy if you ask me. And uh, yeah, that, I think it's pretty great. So what is the last potion here then? So we've gone through... You know, healing, extra damage, we've gone through utility, and we've even gone through not dying. I mean, they're, they're all good things, but what about uh, the last one here? So the last one here doesn't actually require these never warts. I mean, you can use um, the awkward potion still, and we might as well, but you don't actually need to use them. You can use regular water bottles, because if you put these in there, or you put any uh, water bottle in there, you'll eventually get yourself a potion of weakness. So the potion of weakness is entirely useless as a standalone potion, like the potion of harming, like why do you need to poison yourself? But if you throw it in with gunpowder, you get something that is very, very useful. And you might be able to guess what we're doing based on our golden apple and based on the zombie villager. But if you don't know, uh, one of the handy, uh, because the most recent update made it so that villages are super rare and a lot of people don't have them, if you want to make your own village, take it into your own hands, all you have to do is make yourself a splash potion of weakness and then get yourself a golden apple. Admittedly, they're both, you know, it, it's, it's a reasonable request to get both things, but it's totally worth it because if you throw the splash potion of weakness at the zombie, we're probably going to hit ourselves, but that's entirely fine. And uh, <laughs> then you give him a golden apple, it's going to restart a regeneration process. So you can see he's jittering around. Make, so, make sure the zombie villager survives until day. But it has to be a zombie villager. You can tell because they've got the long noses and they look like villagers. If, he, if you just wait uh, for like about three, four minutes, it can be sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Uh, we'll actually happen is he'll transform into a villager so if you do this twice which just requires one slash potion and two golden apples you can have two villagers which start mating and start a village together which is great i mean you can literally create artificial villages using this potion and that's why it's so handy it sounds so ridiculous on paper but it does work so well and i know a lot of you do know this regenerating thing but if you don't know it you need to know get yourself a fermented spider right which is a very weird thing to come across and get yourself some gunpowder get yourself some golden apples and you can make a village you can make lots of villages if you want to. Uh, there's a certain distance between them that you have to adhere to, but if you want, you can have like four villages around the corner of your world, or just have a mega village you start from one. The, the opportunities are endless. Um, I have a villager in my basement in my Let's Play world, for instance, and if you want anything like that, you can do it using this. So I'm actually going to skip forward, and I'm going to uh, show you that it actually does work, and I'm, I've not just glitched out a villager, and then, uh, yeah, I'll finish up the video. And just like that, he turned into a villager. Like, it's a very sudden movement, and it's like, oh, now we've got a villager, and we can trade with the butcher, and boom, we get this stuff. So, um, yeah, and he's, he's going to be an entirely random profession if you get him as a zombie villager. And I think it's cool that we can just start a village this way. Now we can land free, and we've got ourselves an entirely non-hostile mob. It's we, we created a village, and that's insane. Well, we need a second one, and that's why I think this potion is one that you absolutely need to know how to brew. It's, you know, with, with Minecraft console having fewer and fewer villages, which is... Just, you know, it's, it's a necessary part of the thing. Being able to make your own villages is becoming more and more of the skill. And plus, there's an achievement related to it. So, you know, if, if you're not sold on just being able to make a village, then the achievement has to get you. And yeah, that is um, a converted NPC villager. Hopefully, he doesn't run into lava or something like that. I hope you did all enjoy today's video, though. If you did like it, please do like the video and let me know. Because it helps out the channel. And let some of you do like it. I want to see more stuff like this. Share the video if you really liked it. And subscribe if you are new around here. I make videos like this one every single day on my channel. And if subscribed, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Let me know if you do want to see more, you know, things, uh, you know, five something you need uh, videos, because I think it's kind of a fun format. Uh, but yeah, you can let me know in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!